In the vast expanse of our solar system, far beyond the warmth of Earth and the rocky terrain of Mars, lies a seemingly unremarkable icy moon orbiting the ring giant Saturn. Its name is Enceladus. At first glance, it appears lifeless, frozen, and still. But beneath its glimmering icy crust lies a tantalizing secret that has stunned scientists and sparked a growing belief that this moon may be one of the most promising places to find alien life. Enceladus, once overlooked, is now considered one of the brightest hopes in our quest to answer the age-old question. Are we alone in the universe? Enceladus is small, only about 500 kilometers in diameter, roughly one-seventh the size of Earth's moon. Yet, this tiny satellite has made a colossal impact on planetary science since NASA's Cassini spacecraft began orbiting Saturn in 2004. What started as a routine survey of Saturn's many moons turned into one of the most profound discoveries in the history of space exploration. Cassini's flybys of Enceladus revealed a dynamic and active world, one that defied all expectations. The first hint that something strange was happening came in the form of plumes, gigantic geysers of water vapor, ice particles, and organic molecules erupting from Enceladus's south pole. These plumes reached hundreds of kilometers into space, a phenomenon never before seen on such a small moon. They indicated that Enceladus was not just a cold, dead rock. Something was happening beneath the surface, something warm, something alive in a geological sense. The origin of these plumes was a mystery at first, but as Cassini flew closer and collected data, the evidence began to mount. Beneath Enceladus's icy crust lies a global subsurface ocean, an entire ocean of salty liquid water, kept warm not by the sun but by tidal heating. This process occurs because of the gravitational pull between Saturn and its other moons, stretching and squeezing Enceladus as it orbits, generating internal heat. It's the same reason Jupiter's moon Io is the most volcanically active body in the solar system. This discovery alone was revolutionary. Wherever we find water on Earth, we find life. Deep under the sea, in the darkest and most inhospitable places, hydrothermal vents, acidic lakes, boiling springs, life thrives. So, the realization that Enceladus is both water and heat raised a tantalizing possibility. Could it harbor life as well? Even more astonishing were the findings within those plumes. As Cassini passed through them, it was able to taste the contents using its onboard instruments. Scientists detected complex organic molecules, carbon-based compounds that are the building blocks of life. Hydrogen gas was also found, which is a key energy source for some microbes on Earth. This combination of ingredients, liquid water, organic compounds, and a potential energy source, is a holy trinity for astrobiologists seeking extraterrestrial life. But before we let our imaginations run wild with visions of alien ecosystems, we must ask, what kind of life could exist on Enceladus? If any, it wouldn't be intelligent life, or even multicellular organisms like fish or plants. The most plausible scenario is microbial life, tiny, single-celled organisms similar to the archaea that inhabit Earth's extreme environments. Specifically, Life might exist near the hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor of Enceladus, just as it does on Earth's seafloor. These organisms can metabolize hydrogen and carbon dioxide, just like their terrestrial counterparts. The implications of finding such life are staggering. It would mean that life is not unique to Earth. It would suggest that life can arise independently in different environments, and that the universe might be teeming with simple life forms. It would also support the hypothesis that life is a natural consequence of the right conditions, not a rare accident. However, as promising as Enceladus seems, there are still many unanswered questions. For one, we have not directly sampled the ocean itself, only the material ejected into space from the plumes. While those plumes provide a valuable window into the moon's interior, they may not fully represent what lies beneath. It's also possible that the organics detected are the result of abiotic chemistry, chemical reactions that occur without any biological involvement. Nature has a way of mimicking life through chemistry, making it difficult to draw firm conclusions. Then there's the question of contamination. Any future mission to Enceladus must be meticulously sterilized to avoid introducing Earth microbes into this potentially pristine environment. If we did discover life, how could we be sure it wasn't something we brought with us? 
This is one of the reasons why NASA and other space agencies are proceeding cautiously. Despite these challenges, interest in returning to Enceladus is growing. Proposed missions like the Enceladus Life Finder, YLF, or the more recent concept called Orbalander aim to land on the moon's surface, sample the plumes in greater detail, and analyze them for unmistakable biosignatures, signs of life that cannot be explained away by non-biological processes. These missions could revolutionize our understanding of life in the universe. Enceladus is not the only moon in our solar system suspected of harboring an ocean beneath its icy shell. Europa, a moon of Jupiter, is another prime candidate. But what sets Enceladus apart is its active geysers. They offer a rare opportunity to study an alien ocean without having to drill through kilometers of ice. That convenience can make Enceladus the first place beyond Earth where we find definitive proof of alien biology. Let's not forget that even the discovery of no life would be meaningful. It would teach us about the boundaries and limitations of biology. It would force us to refine our understanding of habitability. And it might shift our attention to other, less expected environments. Yet, the possibility that a moon so small and so far from the sun could be nurturing life challenges everything we thought we knew about where life can thrive. It redefines a so-called habitable zone and suggests that warm oceans under ice, maintained by internal heating, might be common in the universe. If such environments are common, then the universe might be filled with hidden life, quietly evolving in darkness. Another intriguing angle is the possibility of panspermia, the idea that life might travel between worlds via comets, meteorites, or other means. If life were discovered on Enceladus and found to be genetically similar to Earth life, it might support the notion that life could spread from one world to another. On the other hand, if life on Enceladus were found to be fundamentally different, it would provide strong evidence that life has emerged independently more than once in the solar system, a discovery that would virtually guarantee its presence elsewhere in the galaxy. The search for life on Enceladus is more than a scientific mission. It's a philosophical and existential journey. It challenges us to think beyond the confines of Earth, to imagine other ways that life might adapt, survive, and even thrive in extreme conditions. It forces us to confront our assumptions and expand our definitions of what it means to be alive. In a universe that feels cold, vast, and indifferent, the possibility that life could be brewing on an icy moon around a gas giant offers a glimmer of connection. It reminds us that Earth is not necessarily unique, and that we may be part of a larger tapestry of life woven across the cosmos. Cassini's mission may be over. It made its final dive into Saturn's atmosphere in 2017, but the questions it raised will echo through science for decades to come. Its legacy lives on the data it returned and in the hopes it ignited. The next chapter in the search for extraterrestrial life may very well be written on the icy plains of Enceladus. Perhaps in the frozen depths of that alien sea, Simple organisms have been quietly evolving, unaware that they are the subject of the greatest mystery humanity has ever faced. So, could Saturn's moon Enceladus be brewing alien life? The answer is still out there, locked beneath layers of ancient ice. But for now, the signs point to one thrilling possibility. We may not be alone.